Hello everyone and welcome to On The Spot STEM. Today we will be covering the Yusuko Silver problem from December of 2018 titled Convention. So in this problem we're given a set of cows and a set of buses with a certain size that can fit a certain number of cows. And all these cows come in at different times and we want to figure out the maximum waiting time of a single cow. So for starters it's pretty easy to see that we should probably sort this list. So let's do that first. But now it gets a little tricky to see what the right way to do this problem is. So instead of looking at the cows and trying to pick the time interval, let's try thinking of a way to pick a time interval and see if that meets our restrictions. For example, let me say what I meant. Let's say I picked a time interval of two. So the maximum time that a cow can wait is two. So what does this mean? These two cows go together and no one else can fit on this bus. Then cows three and four go together and no one can fit in this bus. Then cow 10 will have to go by himself because there's no one else two seconds away from him. And cow 14. We'll have to go by themselves. So what we have done is by saying we have a time interval, let's call that delta t of 2, we needed four buses. And that is definitely not what we want. What if we were to pick a time interval by f like 4, like what the answer is supposed to be? Well, when we actually group the cows, it ends up being a lot better. Because, as we notice, cows 1 and 1 go together, and they would have taken cow 3, but th since that exceeds the capacity, which is 2, of any certain bus, we block it off at 1, 1, then we go 3, 3, or 3, 4, and then 10 and 14 can go together. So as you can see, this meets our restriction of having 3 buses. So the number of buses that we needed for this, let's call that bus, was 3, which is well within our criteria. And what if we picked a time interval of, say, something way, way larger? Well, I get that our restrictions in this case don't work out, but what would have ended up happening if we had more cows and a higher capacity bus size? Let's say our capacity was 3. Okay, and we pick a size of 10. Well, what happens when we pick 10 time difference? Well, 1 and 10 go together, and then 14 is by itself. Because that's the. So we end up only using 2 out of our 3 buses. So you may be wondering what the point of this exercise was, but there was a point. As you can see, when we picked a time interval that was too small, what ended up happening is that we needed more buses than we had. And when we picked a time interval that was too big, we ended up needing less buses than we needed. So what we want to do is pick a time interval that essentially picks the exact number of buses that we need, and it's the least time interval that does that. So since we know that a lower number will create a higher number of buses, and a higher number will create a lower number of buses, then we can think about binary searching through all the possible different values of delta t. And this will work because, well, the time complexity is short. And if we use a time interval of something that's too low, and we understand that it's too low because it gives us too many buses than we need, then we can just increase that time interval. And if we pick one that's too small, then we can just decrease that time interval until we get to the time interval we want. So let's try to implement this code ourselves. So I've, let's, I've already implemented all of the input reading and sorting of the array of time differences. So let's work on making the simulation. So what the simulation is going to take is it's going to take in the array of times that they have come into it, the time de delta time that we are using that we talked about earlier, 
the number of buses we are allowed and the capacity. So first what we're going to do is set up a curlow. What this is going to represent is it's going to represent the Low, the lower time of the bus we are currently focusing on. And then we're also going to store how many people we are putting into a bus at a time. So let's go through all of the different time differences as such. And now we want to first process our case of when we make a new bus. So what happens when we make a new bus is if the current cow we're focusing on minus the lower cow of the bus that we are on, is greater than the time difference we are using. Or our bus has reached its capacity, which is count as equal equal to C. And what we do is our curl low becomes this new one, the cow we are focusing on, time value. We have to subtract one from the number of buses we have been given to account for that because we are now we've used up one bus. And that bus that we are using has a capacity has zero cows in it at the time. And we can say zero cows because at the end right here, we do a count plus plus. So even after processing this cow, it'll end with a net gain of one. So we will still know there's one cow in this bus. Since we'll have a little bit left over of uh, cows, because what if we never get inside of here, but there's still a few cows we haven't processed? How the way we account for this is by subtracting one from M at the very end, because there's a couple of cows that we have not processed. Either it's the very last cow or it's a few cows and the last cow. It doesn't matter. We still have to subtract one to account for this. So now if we ran out of buses, which means we have less than zero, we had to use more buses than we had, we return false. This simulation was not this time difference did not work, it gave us a value that needed too many buses. Otherwise, we return true. Now let's work on implementing our binary search. So for every binary search, you need a high. And for this one, we'll do the last element in this array because that's the greatest time since it's sorted. We also need a low, which I will just set for zero. Like with every binary search, we start off with a while, low is less than high. As the second low becomes greater than or equal to high, that means we've singled in our last on our one value. We also can just make things go a little faster, but I'll get to that later. So we set int middle equals to high plus low divided by two. And then what we want to do is simulate this. So boolean bool equals sim. And middle is our time difference, and we have m buses with a capacity of c. And if bool is equal to middle, or sorry, if bool, that means if we, if you remember from before, that means we had more buses than we actually needed, or the right amount of buses. So if that were the case, that means we want to make our time interval, um, we want to make our time interval lesser, so we make high equal to middle. Otherwise, we make low equal to middle because we want our time interval to be higher. Just to make things run a little smoother, because if high and low are one apart, then low will be constantly less than high, but we'll still keep running the same thing infinitely. What we do is we can just create a int last middle equals negative one and set last middle to middle at the end. So basically, if we are keep having to simulate the same exact thing, that means we're stuck, and that means we should break. So if middle equals last middle, that means I don't want to keep considering this, and let's break. Now, what we have finally done is we have now a low value and a high value, one of which is the one that we want to print. But now all we have to do is figure out which one. So we can do that by running a simulation on high. And if this ends up being true, then we can print high. Otherwise, that means this is the one that jumped over too far and we print low. Now, if you're wondering why this is done, where we have to run this one last time, it's because our 
condition was broken by either low becoming equal to high, or we entered this condition where low and high are one apart and only one of them works, and we have to figure out which one. So this is essentially what this is doing. Low, our answer is either low or high, we just don't know which one, so this is our way of making certain. And then finally, like always, we have to close our print writer. And let us submit this code and see what happens. All right, so let's submit it and see what happens. And as you can see, this code worked and it is well within the time limit.